I'm the shit flick critic. G'day everyone and welcome to the Shit Flick Critic. It's me, Andrew Lewis, with a Q&A for you all. I'd like to thank everyone that submitted a question. I'm going to just jump into these, so here's the first question. So Norman M. Stewart asks, Glad you're back. Thank you very much. It's been years. It certainly has. Question. Which films do you think are the most overrated and pretentious as hell? These kinds of films annoy me. Yes, that's a good question. Uh, I'd have to say probably the films that annoy me the most that I think are the most pretentious are like student, arty, short films. Uh, when I was at film school, they would make us watch short films that had been made in the previous years and also any short films that were kind of floating around South Australia at that point. And a lot of them, I, I enjoyed very few because a lot of them were just like kind of hidden in metaphor, trying to be David Lynch without being David Lynch because only David Lynch can be David Lynch. So it these films where it's like, they didn't quite make a lot of sense. And afterwards everyone sat around going, hmm, hmm, yes, well, I think that the the intention of the windmill was to show that in death, death is a bit like a windmill and that it blows with the wind and there's always change. And it's just, it's those kinds of films where any answer is right. Like, so everyone tries to make it seem like their particular interpretation of all these metaphorical symbologies is the right one. And I just think, I'm a very straightforward person. I think that you can say a lot it's harder to say what you want to say directly than it is just to kind of bury everything in metaphor and hope that people interpreted it the way you meant it. Um, yeah, so I'd have to say sh short films made by students at uni are probably my least favorite kinds of films. Jake Kimball asks, do any big budget movies strike you as SFC worthy? For me, Suicide Squad springs to mind. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I think Watching Suicide Squad is a different experience from, say, watching like Birdemic or Miami Connection. Because the difference with those movies is, even though they're as terrible, there was passion put into it, there was soul, there was heart, and, and it bleeds through and thus makes it more of an enjoyable experience. Because even though the movie's terrible, I like the person who made them. So I want to encourage that person to make more because because the difference is those movies are bad because those people who made them didn't know what they were doing with a movie like suicide squad it's bad because everyone who made it had the ability to make a good film but didn't because there's no soul and because they just wanted to make money and it's just a completely different experience i find those movies terribly boring to watch um i have reviewed some big budget movies like you know like food fight had a lot of money put into it i mean the room cost six million dollars to make but uh, yeah, so I'm not saying I would never review a big budget film. It just needs to be a certain kind of terrible film. And I think with Suicide Squad, it doesn't tick a lot of my boxes to be included in the shit flip critic. So no, and that movie's already been done enough. But um, yeah, there's definitely some big budget movies that I'd be, I'd consider putting into an episode. MIT Bender asks, have you ever thought of setting up a Patreon account to help with the financial burden of making videos? I, for one, would certainly pitch in. Heck, it's just virtual busking. Yes, I, I really do think that's a good idea and worth considering. I tried to start a Patreon count, account about three or four years ago, and it was just, I don't think I had enough subscribers at that point, and for me it was just too, too much. Like, I was already kind of stressing myself out with making these videos. I didn't need that on top of it. But it's definitely worth considering. Um, but at the moment, I'm actually really enjoying busking, so that's not something that I'd want to stop. Uh, I think once my subscriber base gets a bit, a bit bigger, I'll think about it. But for the time being, I'm really happy just busking and just making these whenever I can. Dirty Lizard asks, any plans to do more short films? Barry's Obsession is really good, thanks. Yeah, I'm glad people enjoyed Barry's Obsession. I really enjoyed making it. That was the short film that I made when I was at film school. So that was like my final exam was making a short film. And that was the product. Uh, there's definitely lots of script ideas I've got bumping around in my head. I've always wanted to make like my own terrible TV series. Um, I remember talking about, it. I think my last q and I, I, I talked about it, where I wanted to do like my own Walker, Texas Ranger kind of spoof. Um, there's other script ideas I've got too. Like I want to do like a mockumentary set in a supermarket after all the years that I spent working in a supermarket when I was younger. I've got a lot of stuff to say about it. Uh, yeah, they're bumping around. 
and I do think I probably will make a short film, uh, but I've only just touched down in Adelaide, so I'm just allowing myself some time to adjust, and then um, I think I'm going to sit down and try and pump something out. So yeah, definitely in the future, I'll let you know if there's any scripts I've got uh, sort of midway through. Megan asks, thanks for the update. Can you tell us any memorable stories from your hiking trips? Oh man, hiking stories would almost be a video into itself. I tell you what, if you guys would like me to make a video purely just me sitting, talking for like half an hour about everything, I mean, even half an hour wouldn't cover it. Everything that happened to me while I was traveling, I'd be interested in doing that. But um, yeah, there's so much that happened to me. I mean, I started in Vancouver and I hitchhiked my way all the way across Canada and then all the way down the east coast of America and then along the south coast of America around the Gulf of Mexico and then into Mexico. Hitchhiked, you know, for about, I think, two months in Mexico. And so much happened. I mean, some of just the stories that pop into my mind are things like, um, I got invited to stay with some Mennonites in Manitoba. So I spent a couple days there in a place called uh, near Zorda in Manitoba. Um, a place called Stainback. So it's like this Mennonite community. They took me to the museum and stuff. Um, that was because I was hitchhiking to Regina and I got picked up in a semi-trailer and he happened to be a Mennonite and took me there. I was in Rhode Island and I went to a, a cause I've quit drinking. I went to an AA meeting and that was very surreal because I was staying in this like um, lodge for wayward sailors or something. It was like 30 bucks a night. It was pretty cheap. And the lady just off, she was there from Rhode Island. She offhandedly mentioned, she's like, uh, oh, uh, tonight we got some people coming down downstairs uh, for, for an AA meeting you want to attend. And I was like, I don't see why not. So I'm just sitting there. I'd hitchhiked into Rhode Island that day. So that was very strange. Um, yeah, when it got to me, I was like, hi, everyone. I'm Andrew. They're like, hi, Andrew. I was like, I just hitchhiked here this morning. Um, I'm from Australia. Uh, going to New York sleeping in a graveyard in Sleepy Hollow. I didn't know it was a graveyard when I went to sleep because I was just camping in bushes. So I went to sleep one night in a bush and woke up and there were tombstones everywhere because um, I was just at the edge. I didn't realize I was at the edge of the big graveyard that was there. What else? Um, so many stories, so many interactions with people that it's... Um, yeah, I'd be very interested in making a video, so, so let me know if you want me to do that, because it would, might be a bit long and boring, but it would be literally me just sitting and talking for however long it takes me to get every story out about my travels, so yeah. Nathan Spradlin asks, what will be your reviewing schedule going forward? I'm glad to see you made it back to Australia safe and sound. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to try, no, try is the wrong way to put it. I don't use the word try anymore. I'm going to. Uh, make these as often as I can. So uh, probably once every three weeks. I don't know if that's promising too much, but that's where I'm heading at the moment because I'm so well set up. You know, in the past to to film one of these was always such a challenge because I was I was sharing a house with people, so I had to wait for people to be at work or this or that, or even if they were home, I had to say, look, can you not go into the living room for a certain amount of time because I got to film this video. Whereas it's not like that now. I've got my own space that um, I'm totally in control of. Uh, I've got a studio basically. So like that double down, I think it took me about a week to make. So again, like, you know, I, I'm not gonna be doing these like a full-time job, but uh, every two to three weeks is where I'm aiming for at the moment. So uh, hopefully I can keep that up. I'm interested about doing my quickies again, cause that was a good way just to get a video out maybe weekly of just something funny that I'd seen online. So yeah, um, every two to three weeks. Joseph Joestar asks, very nice that you're back. Thank you very much. If there's any genuinely good advice you've learned from shit flicks over the years, what would it be or what it be? I mean, I, I guess I've just learned intention is everything and why you do something is as important as what you do. And there are so many films, like, like let's say, look at Miami Connection. It wasn't a very good film. There were lots of mistakes. But people love it because they love YK Kim and they love his character and his quirkiness and his inexperience shows through in the film and that's what makes it so wonderful to watch. I mean, it's the same reason why we love watching children draw uh, because you could look at a, a picture of six-year-olds done and go, oh, well, that's not what houses look like. What, that's supposed to be a person? <laughs> and even though it doesn't, it's 
you know they've still got a long way to go you you love it because you love that child and you you want to see what that child can do and and that's the same thing with films it's like people love the people that make them and when you've got soulless films like food fight or um what was another one i've done that's sort of you could put in that category uh I mean, Troll 2 was weird. I wouldn't say that there was a lot of passion put in Troll 2. Uh, okay, we'll just use Food Fight. Food Fight was made purely to make money. There was no other intention. They weren't doing it to spread the love of food brands. They just wanted to make a big billboard. And that's the difference with Food Fight. Is food Fight isn't fun bad. It's, it's hard bad. It's hard to watch. And I just think... Always put your heart and soul into everything you do, because even if you don't do it well, people will just love the fact that you tried. And that is more important than making something that's immaculate and perfect purely to make money. Because, I mean, that's, that's basically where we're at in society at the moment. Everything's about perfection and money. You know, um, songs are about perfection. Songs are just nowadays like everyone has to be pitch perfect every beat has to be perfectly produced and it loses its charm and character I and mean, charm is the big word charm is something that you can't learn at school charm is something that you can't just pick up on the street or you know learn in an afternoon at a workshop charm is something that it, it's a product of your soul and who you are and a lot of these films are just so charming and then a lot of these soulless films are just just disgusting and yeah so and i know that that, that little exp explanation went for a while but to put it plainly always put your heart and soul into anything because even if it doesn't work exact out exactly the way that you plan people still appreciate it because they appreciate you Stephen Tucker writes, amazing to see you back. Thank you very much. And belated kudos for opening up about your mental health associated with your dad. Takes a lot of guts. Credit. My question, how's the music going? Yeah, the music's going. I love it. I, you know, while I was traveling, while I was backpacking across America, I was playing music every day, basically. I played in um, Union Square in New York. I played in uh, Faneuil Hall in Boston. I played in Nova Scotia. I played in uh, Mexico, Monterrey, Matuala. San Luis Potosi, you know, and I loved it. I just, and I'll, I'll never stop loving music and it's going great. I'm, I'm at a point now, as I've said in previous videos, where I can actually make money from my music, which it's the first time that that's ever happened to me where I don't have to get a full-time job. And I know a lot of people say, oh, well, if you did this and you did that, you wouldn't have to busk so much. I busk so much because I love busking and I'm never sick of it. And just so you know, um, Here's a clip. I'll put in a clip now of me playing down at Henley Square in uh, Adelaide. And you can see that not only do I love busking, but people love my love for busking. And you'll see in this video. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of fun, and I'll be busking when I'm done with this video. I'm going to go down to Glenelg and do some busking. You know, music is my life, and I love it with every inch of my soul, and I also love doing the shit flip critic, but as I said in the last video, now I have the time and energy to make this because I'm going out and I'm making money doing something I love. So when I get back, I'm full of positive energy, and I go, oh, I'm going to do the shit flip critic. Whereas, yeah, in the past, in, in New Zealand, I was working in a hardware store. And, you know, I like hardware, but I'm helping people find the right screw all day. And then I'm coming home and I'm just no energy. And I thought about doing the Shipflip Critical Lock while I was in New Zealand. But, you know, I just, I just didn't have the strength and I'd just come to terms with everything that had happened with my dad. So I didn't have a lot of mental energy, whereas now I'm feeling really positive. And um, when it comes to my dad, I'm no contact at the moment, which is really challenging and hard. But... I have to I have to think about my own mental well-being and unfortunately if that means that my dad isn't in my life then you know so be it so that's that's really hard but um my life is so much better for it and I'm 
making leaps and bounds with my own mental health. Uh, yeah, and if any of you, if any of you have any other sort of stories or advice about your mental health, please put it in the comment section, um, because I feel like people shouldn't keep it to themselves, and we all need to help each other out. And I think there's another question about mental health, so I'll, I'll read that. Yeah, the next question is. How have you been dealing with your mental health through these difficult times? And I was wondering if you have any advice to stay motivated to achieve your goals. Love your content and glad you're back. Smiley face. Thank you very much. So I'm sure you all know that I was just in England where Corona was the absolute worst in the world, possibly. I mean, I know that there are other European countries and maybe India is doing really bad or South Africa, but really the thing that saved me throughout all of the challenging things that I experienced in England was my music. I was just going out every day and busking, even in lockdowns, because I, I mean, I had no other source of income. And it's what saved me because even in the worst possible mood, I could go out and busk and come back feeling better. And I think the secret is um, do what you love. Don't betray who you are. Because I think a lot of the reason why people are full of anxiety and full of depression is because they're not being true to who, who they are and what they want to do. We're set up in the society where you're supposed to do something you hate to get money. That's just part of it. And then in the four freaking hours you have when you get home before you go to sleep, then that's the time to do what you're passionate about. And it's just not a big enough window. And I learned I've just completely gotten rid of full-time work from my life. And now all I'm doing is focusing on my music. And so much good is happening. I've played at weddings. I've played at baby showers. And I just love it. And... That to me is the secret. Um, don't betray yourself. And if you say you're going to do something, do it. Stop lying to yourself. And I know it's not lying. It's more like a white lie. But sometimes I'd say to myself, yeah, you know, um, maybe I should start playing, you know, at uh, farmer's markets more. And then this voice in the head is like, well, do it. Now that you've said that you're going to do that, do it. And now I'm playing at farmer's markets. If you say you're going to do something in your head, do it. Because there's no worse guilt for me than always betraying myself, always lying to myself. Um, and it's because I'm scared, basically. I have fear. And there's a book I read that I really enjoyed called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And I always think that to myself. Whenever I'm scared or whenever I don't want to do something, when I was going to cross the border to go into America from Canada, I was terrified. I was so scared. I remember I remember looking at it. I could see the border and I just went and sat by a tree and I was just quiet for about half an hour because I was so scared of the thought of, you know, because I was hitchhiking too. So I had to walk across the border. I didn't know what was going to happen. And then this voice just went, just do it. And I'm so glad I did because America was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. So I said, don't betray yourself and do what you're passionate about and do it now and stop putting things off because you can do it now. You're able to do it now. And we, we, spend so much time telling people they can't we spend so much time going yeah get a job in something you hate doing and then do it no now right now you know i hate to quote shia labeouf but do it just do it don't let your dreams be dreams so yeah uh that's my advice okay uh last comment is a sort of a string of questions and this video is probably already going to go for long enough as it is so i'll just kind of get through these but derek platt asks what is your favorite bad movie that you've discovered? Uh, my favorite bad movie that I'd have to say is probably The Room. I mean, you know, it, it just is because of everything. I mean, it basically started my love for terrible movies. Uh, second to that, I would have to say probably Birdemic. Just because that was my second movie that I ever saw that was that bad. Um, and then... Other than that, I think that's that's about it. Everything else is just equally bad, so I love it all equally as much. Uh, second question. Have you ever been to a screening of The Room? If you have not, then I cannot recommend it highly enough. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't do very well in crowds. I don't like lots of noises, and I don't like being boxed in. I think I would really not enjoy going to The Room screening. Um, I mean, I don't even enjoy bingo as it is, and that's people shout out numbers and shout out, you know uh 22 ducks quack 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 and then in the room people are going to be throwing spoons at the screen i just i know myself enough to know i probably won't enjoy it maybe i could go to one i'd like to just go to a screening where everyone sat down and maybe laughed but i couldn't go to one where people are throwing footballs around and they go dressed as the characters i 
I just know me and I don't think I'd enjoy that. Are there any movies that are just so bad that you cannot bear to watch them even for the shit flick critic? Thank you again, Derek. Yeah, there's loads of movies. I mean, um, any Steven Seagal movie. There's, there's movies that are, aren't fun bad. They're just bad bad that I've even tried to watch. I mean, Double Down was hard enough as it was. I really struggled to get through Double Down. So are there, I know that there are loads of bad movies out there, but there are bad movies that are also just boring and basically unwatchable. So, um, yeah. Uh, I said even... I just can't keep quoting Food Fight enough because Food Fight wasn't just bad. It was offensive and it hurt my soul watching it. So movies like that, but... Yeah, there's thousands of movies out there that I think are unwatchable. I mean, even pornos are their own thing. I could even probably do episodes like where I just, I didn't show sex scenes, but just critiqued porno plots and acting and everything. But um, again, there's no charm. And what I'm after when I watch a shit flick is charm. So uh, yeah, I would say probably Food Fight is my, that's my bar for how bad a shit movie can be. But um, that was the last question, so thank you very much. I hope that, that was insightful. I'm sorry if it went on for a little bit too long and if I ram rambled. I mean, I know probably there's only about three of you left watching right now, but um, I want to thank everyone who submitted a question. I want to thank uh, all my subscribers. Um, if there's any anyone who I forgot or if there's any other questions you have, please just put them in the comments section below. I'll answer them as quickly as possible. Uh, oh, what happened to my color balance now? It's coming back. Um, yeah, uh, there was another thing I wanted to say to, yeah, if any of you are struggling with any mental health, chuck it in the comment bar and I'll give you some support because, you know, I think we should all be there for each other when it comes to stuff like that. Too many people keep it to themselves and it just festers. So, uh, thus concludes my Q&A. Thank you everyone again and I will see you in the next review.